Oh, cool. What else do we got? This? Yep, cool. Alright, let's uh, disassemble all this crap in my inventory. It's all garbage. And uh, continue on our main quest line, really. I mean, I could go to time break too, but I don't have to because the dimensional seal, the dimensional crack has been sealed, <gasps> and thus uh, everything else is fine. Hmm. So now that that's all out of the way, uh, there is there is another another uh, thing that happened recently. Um, a little bit more information was leaked about Pokemon Go, so the original video leak uh, was disappointing as hell. It was the one where I said uh, it looked like all you did was throw Pokeballs at it, and and I thought eh, it can't be all. That can't be it. Nintendo's usually pretty o pretty okay about stuff like this, and usually provide a nice product. So. I was a little skeptical about that being everything. And, uh, turns out, hey, that's not everything. Apparently there's, um, there's gonna be gyms, and there's gonna be battling in it and stuff like that. You know, the stuff you, the stuff you expect from Pokemon. And apparently you can, uh, like, when I say there's gonna be gyms now, how does that work with Pokemon Go, a game where, uh, basically, uh, everything is... Ow, is based on uh, roaming around with your phone and stuff like that. Well, the way that works is apparently there are going to be uh, like uh, destinations that can be counted as gyms, and I'm ass I'm assuming this is going to be unique to the uh, the area that you live in. At least that's just an assumption. Oh, I took your heart. I assume that that's going to uh, just be based on the area that you live in and stuff like that. And apparently, you can uh, you can fight the area to claim the gym as your own. And if someone else owns the gym, you can battle their Pokemon and try and take claim of the gym as your own gym instead of it being theirs. Which I think is a pretty darn cool uh, cool idea for a mechanic. That's not necessarily the perfect way to to um implement it. Jeez, implement is the word I'm looking for. Not necessarily the perfect way to implement it, but it's a hell of a lot better than having it not exist at all. So things things are looking looking interesting. Oh, I had no space. So many things in my inventory. Plenty of stuff I can sell, too. Or just plain dump. Dump them. More demon invitations? Sweet. So yeah, it looks like it looks like Pokemon Go is going to be. Um, at least relatively involved. There's going to be stuff you can do and things that can happen as opposed to nothing. Because at first it kind of looked like it was nothing. kind of looked like, oh, you get to throw Pokeballs at Pokemon and you have to aim. Yay! And, uh... Yeah, I don't know about you, but that seems... <laughs> it seems... a little... a little weak. Like, like... That's not anywhere near what you would think, even even for like a, a small mobile game, mobile app game kind of thing. It just seems far, far below the scope of what Nintendo would try and do. Oh, it's time to get rid of some... Time to get rid of some, some quests here. Let's get rid of some of these quests that are, uh, stuff I'm probably never going to do. 
I'll keep those, why not? You, oh. Why do, why do you do this? Why do you do this, quest manager? I can go do these quests in the future if I, if I really want to. Eh. I'll talk to Captain Luther some other time. Using sub equipment is going to be a thing. I wish I could abandon these. I really do. But I can't. It won't let me. Oh well. Alright, let's go back to talk to Hearts and continue. So yeah, Pokemon Go seems a lot more involved than just... Just, uh, something very small. Which is nice. Which is nice. I always want Pokemon games to do fun to do well because I enjoy Pokemon games. They're uh, they're still like uh, classic RP RPG style games, which have fallen mostly to the wayside in in favor of uh, more more real time action kind of combat. And I'm a big fan of uh, turn based. RPG combat with with uh, strategies involved and stuff like that. Whereas uh, some people, some people not quite so much. Hey, you can't be charging a Trigon Strike the second I walk in. It's not cool, bro. Not kosher. Some people aren't a big fan of the the turn based combat, but I personally have always been and will continue to be so. I mean, there's no reason to not like it. It works. I mean, since the dawn, since the dawn of time, it's worked since forever. I mean, chess is still turn-based. It's basically just turn-based combat. It still works to this day. I un I understand the desire to do more uh, more action combat stuff in uh, video games now because. Like, the technology is now there where it's possible, whereas with turn-based combat, it was more of a necessity than a desire. But, well, once you have the capability of doing more, well, some people have the desire for the turn-based combat. Which I do. I mean, uh... I'm not going to take anything away from it, from, like, a uh, Well-made... A well-made combat system that, uh... Let's bring them down. There we go. A well-made combat system that is more uh, real-time based or anything like that. Like, uh, for example, Final Fantasy XII had a really good combat system. Like, a lot of, a lot of people shit on the game, but I, I'd say the problems with Final Fantasy XII weren't necessarily the gameplay itself or the combat system or anything like that. I think it was probably more the story being complete shite, and no real direction, and having no real main character were probably the big the big issues. Like, uh, for some reason, ever since Final Fantasy... I, wa I want to say... 10 is probably the one where it started getting really bad. But, uh, the main character, quote-unquote, of the of the Final Fantasy games from there then on hasn't really been the main character of the story. I guess in 13 Lightning is, but they, I mean that game's got its own host of other problems. And that's uh, that's kind of been a problem. If you look at like Final Fantasy 12, Vaughn and Pinello have no place in the story whatsoever, and they shouldn't be there. They're only there because Vaughn likes airships and Pinello likes Vaughn. Yay! 
Honestly, they seem like they weren't even supposed to be in the game at all, and then some someone came by, like a producer or some someone in management came by and said, "You need a you need these two character archetypes." And it's like, "But why? They don't fit into the story anywhere." No, you need them because they're popular. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Doesn't doesn't make much sense to me. Goodbye, Dargan. But, uh... That, that was my biggest concern, my biggest issue with Final Fantasy XII. I think the Gambit system was a, a good idea, overall. It was perhaps a little bit, um... A little bit overtuned. I think you could do a little bit too much with the Gambit system in Final Fantasy XII, and for anyone that doesn't know what the Gambit system is, the Gambit system basically lets you program the AI of any of your allies, and what that did was it would, it would give you like uh, very very simple specific commands for, for that you could uh, give to your allies that they would always follow if you weren't directly controlling them. Because in a real-time combat situation, it's somewhat difficult to control, like, four different unique allies for, uh, for plenty of people, it can be a little bit difficult. So having, having a, uh, a, fallback, a fallback system of artificial intelligence that they follow is a good idea. So to find system. Uh, what a lot of people didn't like is that you could set it so that every single character could run on gambits all the time, and then you could like have your you could have your party do entire fights and then walk away if you wanted to. Now, I mean that's that's on you, dude. You have all the control over that. You didn't have to play that way. <laughs> for for anyone that's ever had that that uh complaint about, it, I'm like, dude, you could have just not done that. Did, did you ever think of that? It ruined the experience for me. No, sir, you ruined the experience for you. You didn't have to use it. It was there as a convenience. To help you. And that, that's like someone that activates cheats on a game, and they activate god mode on the game, and then they're like, oh, this game's too easy. And it's like, dude, just don't activate god mode, and maybe it's not. Or they, they put in, like, the cheats for Grand Theft Auto to constantly heal themselves and give themselves the best weapons. It's like, oh, this game's so easy. It's like, it's not if you play it. <laughs> if you actually play the game, it's, it's challenging. So, so for Final Fantasy XII, you could set that up, and you could have many lines of code, and uh, it, I, I call them lines of code because it, it was basically like programming your allies for your own uh, very specific commands. So you could have something like, uh, if ally falls below 60% health, use Kuraga or use the, an item. Then you could specify stuff like that. And then you could, and then you could have like uh, target flying enemies to prioritize that over something ground, etc., etc. And you could. You could set your team that way. I thought that was super freaking smart to have a system like that for for uh, the general public to play with. Because if you don't have a system like that, a lot of people are going to complain, Oh, I can't control all four of these characters at once. I keep dying, this and that. And it allows you to cater to the casual audience while still giving the option of doing everything yourself to everyone else. And here's the thing, doing everything yourself is is just straight up better. It, it always will be. Having the human element will always be better than uh, just running through everything. Now, that's not to say you can't play the entire game just using the, uh, the commands. You can. It's just, uh, you, it's probably going to take longer to do most bosses. It's not going to be optimal at all. But, uh, I think that was a great idea for uh, having real-time action in a Final Fantasy game. I think the way that that was handled was very well. Spacing was handled well, using the 3D space and everything.
So if Final Fantasy XII had actually had a story that didn't suck dick and didn't have Vaughn and Pinello in it, it would have been a really, really good game. It's it's a, a darn shame that Vaughn and Pinello had to come along and ruin the game. Honestly, I blame those two for for the entirety of the game and anything that was bad in it. It's their fault. Because without them, there would probably be more focus on the... There probably would have been more perfect focus on what was going on in the story and everything like that. Probably. Not definitely, but probably. Yeah, and the the rest of the systems, the license system wasn't my favorite, but it made it kind of made sense in a way. Like, uh, because like the way that worked was you had a license, you had to er get a license in order to use specific weapons and magic and stuff like that, which made sense for some of them, because uh, the, like the setting is in a more it's in it's in basically a kingdom for the most part and you do a lot of mercenary work for it. So it would make sense that you would need some sort of permit or some sort of license in order to wield, you know, a big fucking two-handed claymore or, what or whatever weapon you had, some guns. So it, it would make sense that you'd need a license to carry certain things and buy them and use them as weaponry. What didn't make sense was needing to use licenses to summon old gods when you got the ability to find them and use them. That didn't make much sense. Otherwise, the license system was basically like uh, the sphere grid again. And worked just fine. Ah, so I can hit him with the abyss drop damage, but I won't bring him to the ground. Man, this guy is a... Uh... He's dedicated to the to being up there. Finally. Jeez. That was that was unfortunate. Oh well. So yeah, like uh the the basics of it is I still really really enjoy turn-based combat. And that's one of the things with, like, Final Fantasy VII getting a remake. I hope they keep turn-based combat and all that stuff. And if you want to you give them super HD graphics and everything, yeah, cool. Go for it. A at least keep the, the turn-based combat in there. I'd very much appreciate that. They probably won't, though. But if they, if they create real-time combat, I can at least appreciate what they do. And the effort that's put into make to making it good, because I can't imagine doing, I can't imagine designing turn-based combat around multiple characters or real real-time combat around multiple char unique characters to be super easy. It would be like if in Warcraft 3 you could control, like, tons of different heroes. Well, maybe not tons, but at least four different heroes all at the same time. And, uh, and then give the heroes more... more unique abilities that they could use than what they could in Warcraft 3. And, th and then you would have basically the equivalent of that. Hi, Bacall. What's up, dude? I murdered the shit out of you in other verse. A lot. A lot, a lot. So how many of those robe does Bacall have? Because you have to think when he transforms into a giant dragon and gets angry, he shreds through the clothes, right? Right? I mean... That's my thoughts on it. He, like, he hulks out and turns into a dragon. That's gotta rip his clothes apart. How much does he spend on that? I guess he's rich as fuck. 
if, if you think about it. Or he could just steal it. He is a dragon. That is what dragons do. They see something they like and they just take it. Or if they have something they like and they want it fixed, or another version of it, they just go tell someone, yo, make this for me. And they will say yes, because he is a dragon. You don't, you don't necessarily mess with the dragons.